Welcome back everyone, it is Eric from Rare Candy, and today we have the first batch of cards revealed from Japan's new Snow Hazard and Kleber sets. So these things got kind of unexpectedly revealed in the middle of the night and actually kind of threw my upload schedule off. I originally had a completely different video intended for today, but these cards are, you know, kind of important. There's definitely some pretty notable ones here. So we had to shift gears and cover these cards instead, which I am excited to talk with you guys about today. That being said though, these cars are still kind of a ways away for us. They come out in Japan April 14th, but they are more than likely gonna release in the Paldea Evolve set closer to the summertime. So a lot definitely could change in that sort of time span. So something to keep in mind as we do go through these new cards. But with that being said, guys, if you can, leave a like on the video, feed that always hungry YouTube algorithm, and then let's jump in and check out these new cards from Snow Hazard and Clayburst. Okay, so first we have Chi Yu EX. It's another one of these Pokemon in this weird, uh, like, quartet, I think it is, that's from Scarlet and Violet. Uh, but the first attack, discard two cards from the top of your opponent's deck, and the second attack for two fire does 100. You choose up to three of your bench Pokemon, search your deck for a basic fire energy, and attach it to each of those Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. So both these attacks, I think, are actually kind of interesting. The first one kind of reminds me of Houndoom EX back from the, uh, what was it, the XY era, which actually was kind of a popular mill deck, um, you know, somewhat popular, I would say. So that is definitely a consideration. But the second attack, also kind of interesting here. You know, I think Fire is kind of an awkward type to be just because, like, unless your Pokemon have a two energy attack cost, very frequently, it's actually difficult to get them powered up with Magma Basin. So for these Pokemon like Arcanine EX or ver the various Charizard cards that exist, uh, you know, that have a three or more attack cost, it's kind of awkward to get them powered up. And Chi Yu EX offers you a way to soften up your opponent while also setting up some of your Pokemon on the bench. Now, what do we actually pair this with? I think that's still kind of up in the air. Arcanine EX definitely comes to mind, but I don't think we're actually pairing this with like Charizard V-Star or any Pokemon V, just because Arceus can already sort of accomplish that. Uh, but this is pretty decent energy acceleration, I won't lie. So if we do get some good fire EXs throughout the Scarlet and Violet era, you know, this actually could be a pretty decent attack to lead the game with. It's not too hard to get powered up with just one attachment and a Magma Basin. You might be able to get this thing up and running. Alrighty, up next from there, we have the first of several pseudo reprints, uh, and that is going to be Bax Calibur. So this is going to be a stage two Pokemon, very important to note here, but says as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a basic water energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So this is identical to Rain Dance that we've seen on Blastoise, which is, you know, probably one of the best water Pokemon we've ever seen. Kind of similar to Frostmoth, you know, the trade off to Frostmoth for newer players here, if you want to think about it that way is you can attach to any Pokemon you want. You're not limited to just the bench, but of course it does come at the cost of being a stage two, which is significantly harder to power up compared to Frostmoth. Now, if we can get some ways to more easily get out our stage two Pokemon, this definitely could be, you know, something we eye down, especially since Chien Pao EX is a water Pokemon and also is going to be looking to be paired with this. But yeah, being a stage two is definitely the, the big obstacle this card is going to have to overcome if it does want to see any play. But of course, the big partner they are sort of pushing it with here is going to be the Chien Pao EX. So let's take a look at this thing. Has this ability once during your turn, if this Pokemon is your active, you may search your deck for two basic water energy, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. And then it's attack for two water to 60 and you discard any amount of water energy from this Pokemon and a 60 for each card you discarded in this way. So the ability just right off the gate kind of reminds me of uh, Maridon EX, whereas Maridon could search for um, basic lightning Pokemon. This gets you to basic water energy. So kind of a similar vibe here. And this actually is pretty cool. This does really help out your Bax Calibers once you finally do get them online. Because one of the issues with these styles of uh, abilities with Bax Calibur or even Blastoise of the past is that you're accelerating from hand. So you always need like draw supporters or, you know, cards like energy search, energy retrieval, etc., to keep filling your hand with energy. So it's nice that the deck has some sort of just built in uh, support in that way. And of course, we also do still have the superior energy retrieval uh, that we're getting in Scarlet and Violet base set to be able to pair with this as well. Uh, I don't think getting energy is gonna be your problem. I think it's actually just gonna be getting your Bax Calibers online. But if you can, the attack is actually pretty good. I mean, a 60 multiplier, if we wanna knock out Pokemon V Max, that's what, 
six energy we discard or five plus a band slash belt. So that seems okay. And then obviously V stars are a little bit easier to knock out from there. So yeah, I mean, I think the stack kind of builds itself. The big obstacle though is, can we actually get Bax Caliber online? If you can, deck is probably decent. If you can, it's probably not. So uh, we'll have to see what ends up happening with these. Okay, but next up we have Rob Scott. And this is a card I'm kind of conflicted about how I feel. Um, so right the gate, stage one Pokemon with 70 HP in particular is notable because that does make this entire evolution line level ball searchable. So that's a plus. But the first attack here is definitely the attack that's going to catch your interest here. For a colorless energy, you choose a Pokemon from your discard pile and put it onto your bench. So one thing that's cool about this, it does not specify basic Pokemon, meaning yes, we can get additional stage ones, or I think more importantly, stage two Pokemon into play with this thing. Stage two Pokemon are sort of notoriously difficult to get in play. We were just talking about that with Bax Caliber, where, you know, if you can't get Bax Caliber into play, your whole deck sort of falls apart. So for these sorts of stage twos, we can use something like a Rob Scott to maybe get them in play. But I think my issue with this card is just that you're already devoting resources into setting up this Pokemon. Why not just use those resources and spaces in your deck for more consistency cards to get your stage two in play to begin with? So I think that's where this card loses me. If this was maybe get two Pokemon, then maybe we'd be in business. Um, but right now, I just don't think you're getting enough value out of this to um, set this up instead of your preferred Pokemon. And also too, you have to get the Pokemon into your discard pile first, meaning you're gonna have to find this Pokemon you want, Ultra Ball it away, research it away. It's not impossible, but it's just an extra hurdle you're gonna have to jump through that might make it harder to actually pull off this attack. You know, that being said, maybe there's some potential here, but you know, for the moment, I'm a little bit skeptical of this attack. Okay, next up though, we have Ting Lu EX. So this thing's actually pretty beefy, it has 240 HP, which on a basic Pokemon, definitely very, very solid. Uh, let's see, Grass Weakness, four Retreat. Uh, but this ability says, if this Pokemon is your active, your opponent's Pokemon with damage counters on them have no abilities, but excluding Pokemon EX. So this does shut down a good bit of Pokemon. Let's just try to run through a few of them. Uh, obviously, Comfy and Cramorant, those are gonna be big ones for Lawson based decks. Uh, Radiant Greninja, Genesect V. I'm sure I'm forgetting something else off the top of my head here. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely pretty solid to be able to shut down um, abilities on Pokemon. We don't have a ton of ability lock in the format. So being able to actually shut these down is pretty good. So that's cool. We just need a way of getting damage counters on the Pokemon. Of course, we have the Halucha that's coming out in Scarlet and Violet, but we also do have this attack here for three fighting, which honestly is kind of annoying. Uh, does 150, but then we put two damage counters on one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So I think had this attack been like two fighting, I would actually probably like this a lot. I think this would be really good in that situation. It would kind of feel kind of like Dragapult V Max, definitely kind of a very similar vibe with the attack, but just again, requires a little bit more energy than we would like. And the two damage counters is is nice. I mean, that does allow us to set up this ability here. And 150 isn't a bad amount of damage either. It's a generally decent two-shotting amount. And with things like choice belts, we can even guarantee like two shots on Pokemon EX. Or I'm sorry, uh, Pokemon V Max. But yeah, the three fighting energy is definitely the big obstacle to overcome here. So we'd probably have to play Coridon EX and or Gutsy Pickaxe. I think those seem like probably necessities if we do want to get this thing up and running. But between this and the uh, the Chin Pao EX, uh, I definitely like the water one a bit more. That being said, ability lock is good. Just if we can get around this funky attack cost, the card might actually be able to see some play. But otherwise, I don't have a lot of hope for this thing right now because we also can't really use this as like a hit and run Pokemon just because it has a four retreat cost and we don't have like Floatstone or anything like that. Uh, because otherwise we could use something like, I don't know, um, Reggie Lucky V, just easy example. So if we had some decent Pokemon like that, we could attack, switch into this and lock our opponent's abilities, but we don't really have the cards necessary for that sort of strategy. So again, I think for the moment, we are sort of locked into attacking with this thing if we do want to make use of it. And there are some issues there. So we'll see how this thing is going to land when it comes out. So we actually have our first ever Dunsparce. 
And unfortunately, I think this card is probably just as disappointing as the actual Pokemon's design ended up being. Uh, so it's second attack here does 100. Your opponent's active is now paralyzed, but then you shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. So paralysis, like automatically is pretty good guys, but the damage output is pretty low for this amount of energy. Being colorless means you're also never gonna hit anything for weakness. And how are we ever going to chain these attacks? That's sort of the next question to sort of contend with because you're putting the energy back into your deck. And also, even if you are paralyzing your opponent, you know, a lot of decks right now are playing like heavy switch cards other than like Lugia. So I don't even know how often this paralysis is actually gonna stick. So kind of unfortunate to Dunspar is not too great. Okay, so we have a new mouse hold that actually has a kind of interesting attack here. Uh, it says, put damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon equal to the number of mouse hold that you have in play. So what this means effectively is if we have all four mouse hold in play, we can spread four to all of our opponent's Pokemon. So kind of a cool effect. Maybe if the other mouse hold becomes decent, this could be like a one of theoretically in a deck like that. But my issue with this, first of all, is you need every mouse hold in your deck into play for this to be any meaningful amount of damage. So that assumes you're not gonna prize any of these. But also this requires three energy, which is kind of awkward. If this was two, I'd be a little bit more enthusiastic about this, but really right now, I don't think we have a great way at getting three energies on these things consistently. Uh, I mean, there are things like Mirage Gate or even like Flaffy or, or Cherim, but you know, even if this was just too colorless, I still don't even know if that would be good enough for this card to be good. And at the end of the day, there are certain cards out there like Switch Cart that could just heal off the Pokemon you're spreading damage to. So probably not that great at the end of the day. So for our final Pokemon we're gonna look at today, we have Squawkabilly EX, which is definitely one of the more interesting ones we have today. Uh, it has this ability on your first turn of the game. You may discard your hand and draw six, but you can't use more than one of these abilities during your turn. So at a quick glance, this actually does look like the Dene GX, which was, you know, an incredible card. Saw play basically from the moment it was printed till the moment that it rotated. But the big trade off here is that this card only allows you to do this on the first turn of the game. And honestly, I kind of like this change just because the Dene, I think, really does, you know, disproportionately enable all basic decks. It enables more aggressive decks to be successful. It's not a card that, you know, often benefits slower, more methodical setup based decks. So the fact that this ability is getting a nerf to only being useful on the first turn of the game is something I actually really do like. These all basic aggressive decks definitely can still make use of this, but you know, they're not gonna be able to play multiple of these throughout the course of the game and just have this crazy draw engine at their disposal. So I actually do like this change. I'm definitely curious what you guys are thinking about this one as well. And then it's attack, also not horrible for a colorless energy, this 20, and you attach up to two basic energy from your discard to one of your Pokemon. So the attack is definitely a little bit of an afterthought, but it always is nice when these sort of bench sitting Pokemon do have some sort of a attack you can fall back on after you've already made use of this ability. And also another thing I just realized, this is actually not a coming into play ability as well. So I, that is also one sort of, um, you know, trade off in its favor to Dene. You had to play it from hand. This, if you are unfortunate enough to start with it, well, you can actually use this ability unlike with the Dene. So that actually does make this card a little bit better in that regard too, I suppose. Yeah, I think Squawk ability is cool. I like this card. This is definitely a change for this ability I like. And I definitely wanna hear from you guys on this one specifically. Do you think this is a fair change? Do you think this is better for the game for it to be designed like this? Or do you think it's not very useful now? Sound off down below in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. But getting into our trainers, we're finally reunited with our old friend, Super Odd. It's been many, many years at this point, but it is finally back. We shuffle in three of any combination of Pokemon and basic energy from our discard back into our deck. So this is finally gonna give us some Pokemon recovery. You know, we are getting Miriam in Scarlet and Violet, but it's kind of an awkward card to use because it's a supporter and doesn't get energy. And with Ordinary Rod rotating, there hasn't been something like this remaining in the format to sort of fill that void. So this is gonna be great for just so many decks out there. I think specifically for like single prize decks and evolution decks. I mean, Super Odd's basically always been good every time it's been printed. And I'm hoping we finally get a secret rare version. That's one thing we have not seen with any printings of Super Odd yet. So I'm looking forward to hopefully getting some gold versions of this guy for, uh, you know, to bling out my decks with, so. Happy to have this one back. 
Okay, next up we have like kind of a reprint-ish card. Uh, we have Charm of Courage. So it's a new Pokemon tool, but it says the basic Pokemon this card is attached to gets plus 50 HP. So actually this is a direct upgrade from Cape of Toughness, which of course is leaving us in the rotation. So even though they both do plus 50 HP, Cape of Toughness of course had that, you know, that extra clause on the card that said it doesn't apply for Pokemon GX. So for what it's worth, this will work on Pokemon GX now, but it's really not that relevant for standard format. Uh, effectively, this is gonna do the same thing in most instances. So cards like Blissey V are still gonna be able to use an effect like this. Of course, we also looked at those two new legendary EXs. I think this easily could pair well with both of those. So this card definitely seems good. I, I'm just a little bit bummed that we're seeing more basic Pokemon support. If I'm being honest, like going into the Scarlet and Violet era, you know, when the EX mechanic and everything was revealed, it definitely looked like they were positioning this era of the game to be more focused on evolutions and getting back to that sort of game design. And with stuff like this and the new Qian Pao EX, it, it kind of leaves me scratching my head a little bit thinking, well, so is that a lie or what? Like, are we going to be focusing more on evolutions or is this just maybe sort of a one-off occurrence that we're going to see? It just kind of has me confused about that. So good card. I'm just not really happy to see more cards like this in standard format. All right, next up we have Grusha, which is I think kind of an interesting card here. It says you draw until you have five, but... If you have no energy cards attached to any of your Pokemon, draw up to seven instead. So a draw up to seven effect, actually not too bad, I will say. And even though you do have to have no energy, there are definitely gonna be times where that's the case. You know, I don't think this would see play in a deck like, let's say, Maridon EX, just as an example. But something like the new Qian Pao EX, where you're discarding all of your energy every time you attack. Well, at the start of your next turn, you're not gonna have energy in play and you can use something like this or think of a deck kind of like Zorark Toolbox where you're only ever attaching, you know, probably just one energy in play at a time whenever you're going to attack. So this actually could be a supporter that could pop up in lower counts in certain decks, I think. And we have one more card to look at, and I think we probably saved the best for last. We have Iano, which is a sort of reprint, which seems to be the theme of this set so far, of a very good card of the past. It says each player shuffles their hand into their deck puts it at the bottom of their deck, then each player draws a card for each of their remaining prize cards. So yeah, this is basically if you took N plus Marnie and put them into one. And honestly, I think this is probably better than both of those cards because with N, yeah, you're putting your opponent down to potentially one or two cards depending on how many prizes they have left, but they're shuffling in and drawing those cards back. Meaning if you know your opponent has game in hand and you end them, they still have a chance at drawing back into the game winning card they were hoping to keep. But with Iano, those cards are going straight to the bottom of their deck. They are not getting that card back quite as easily. So I think in fact, this is actually just better than N in most situations. So I think a lot of people were sort of wondering if N was gonna get a reprint since Pokemon openly said they want more comeback potential in the game, more comeback mechanics. And this definitely falls right in line with that. This is definitely a super big comeback mechanic. Uh, since now, if your opponent is sort of running away with the game, you know, at once they're down to like one or two prize cards, hit them with this and just watch them just dead draw to a loss, essentially. Like anyone who's been playing for a while who's played in a format with N probably can tell you there's so many games where your opponent just hits you with a late game N and you just lose as a result of it. And trust me, the same thing is going to happen with this card as well. And interestingly, we have Collapse Stadium in the format, which is kind of similar to Parallel City. We have this, which is again, kind of similar to N. We're just missing a like pseudo Garbotoxin reprint to shut off abilities to hit our opponents with that big, you know, wombo combo, which is sort of like the ultimate disruption combo we would see in the past where you would um, turn off your opponent's abilities, limit their bench size with Parallel City, and then end them to like nothing and watch them just dead draw into oblivion. So, I'm probably hoping we don't see a Garbotoxin reprint, but it's interesting to see if we did get that, we would sort of be able to recreate that combo of the past. But yeah, Iano is very, very good. I think I would actually say, like I said, the best card of all these new cards that we looked at today. But I am definitely curious, guys, what do you think about all these cards we looked at today? You know, I think some of the best ones are honestly just like pseudo reprints or outright reprints with Super Odd. Uh, so we have the Iano, we have the Super Odd, we have Squawk Billy, uh, where was it? The 
uh, what was it called? Yeah, the Bax Caliber. So we have a lot of potentially good cards that are just sort of recreating these old classic effects. And they're probably still going to be good in today's format. But definitely sound off down below in the comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Which of these cards has you most excited? But if you guys did enjoy today's content, remember to leave a like on the video. And if you're feeling maybe a little extra generous and want to take that support to the next level, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.